<laughs> you, didn't, you weren't even recording. I wasn't. I am now. <sighs> Amateur hour. I was born ready, Three, Josh. Three, two, one. Just let that sink in the crowd for a second. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome back to Beyond the Box with Ben. I'm Ben, and today we're going to be talking about... Circularity. Circularity refers to circular systems as opposed to linear systems. Circular, linear. The way that many businesses operate today follows a linear model of use. Materials enter the stream, are turned into something and then discarded as waste. The takes, makes, wastes model. In that system, materials are extracted for single-use products before being discarded. An alternative to that system is a system of circular. A lot of what contributes to a circular system are the materials that are being used. This is part of our strategy to keep materials in use for as long as possible and make sure that we're providing for the end of life of those materials as well. Yep. To that end, we have three different frameworks that we design our products and materials to fall into. Love frameworks. The first is recycled, ah. second would be compostable, ah. and the last would be reusable. Ah. Most of these products fall into multiple different categories within that. So, for example, this is a recycled mailer, but it also is reusable. So you're extending the use from just single to double, and then also making it out of recycled materials. For our craft mailer, you can reuse it, and it's also compostable, and it's also made out of recycled materials. So that's a three for, three for one? That's a three for, talk about. <laughs> so first, let's talk about our compostable packaging range. What does it actually mean to be certified as compostable? Well, for us, the certifications that we've achieved mean that our home compostable packaging can compost in a home compost. <laughs> To be certified as home compostable, a product must break down in home composting conditions within 180 days, or 90 days in commercial composting conditions. The difference between the two is that commercial composting runs a lot hotter and it's a little bit more intense. Composting is the process of recycling organic material so that it can eventually be reused. Usually that reuse happens just by plants. <laughs> Compostable packaging is usually made up of a number of renewable plant-based materials and or biopolymers. Sometimes people don't notice that an item is home compostable and it can end up in a landfill. Mm. That's not great. So what's important is to find out your local composting uh, opportunities and availabilities. There are community composts that exist, you can make your own home, home compost in your backyard, or you can check out if your town has a commercial composting facility that you can use. Commercial composting facility. <laughs> What we want to do here is make sure that these compostable materials and this compostable packaging doesn't end up in landfill. One of the simplest ways we do this is by advertising that this is a 100% compostable mailer. That should tell your customers all they need to know, but it helps to include some education points around that either in your packaging or on your website or however you sell your items. Let people know they can compost this stuff. It's pretty cool. Recycled packaging is made up of a variety of materials that have been recycled and are ready to be reused. In terms of our recycled plastic packaging, that could be any single-use plastic item like plastic bags, spoons, cups, things that have entered the waste stream and are now getting chopped up, essentially, and then turned back into more materials that we can use. Our recycled plastic mailers, for instance, are made from a combination of recycled low-density and high-density polyethylene. Those are two materials that are normally used for plastic bags, low-density, and plastic bottles, high-density. There's a lot of LDPEs and all that kind of stuff out there, but just know that various versions of plastic can be recycled, given another chance, and put back into the world. When it comes to recycled paper packaging, that's a much simpler process that involves pulping up paper that's already been used and then reconstituting it into ready-to-use paper products. Recycling reduces the amount of waste sent to landfills and incinerators. Simply put, at the end of the day, we're giving something another life instead of needing to go out and get more raw materials to make new things. We can use things that already exist and repurpose them to keep them in the circle for longer. Win, win, win. Win, win? There's a couple of wins going on. If you're looking to recycle a piece of plastic, make sure you look at the bottom or somewhere on it for that little number that tells you what type of plastic it is. Um, your local government or local organization should have more information about what's recyclable in your immediate area. Recycle if you can. Recycle. Everything. Recycle. We'll turn it into this stuff. Recycle your plastics. Recycle when you can. 
The third R in that cycle is reusable. Reusable when it comes to packaging is one of the most important parts of packaging because it means that you're not just gonna use it once and get rid of it, you're gonna use it multiple times over and that's just gonna contribute to fewer single use items being put into the landfill. The best example of this would be a reusable tote bag. With things like a tote bag, instead of getting those single use plastic bags, you can actually use this as many times as you need before it reaches its end of life, hopefully being recycled or turned into a new product. Reusable packaging and reusable items allow you to avoid having to use single-use stuff in the first place, which is fantastic. So even though this mailer is compostable and will home compost in 180 days, it also has a reusable strip on it, meaning that instead of just using it once, you can use it twice. More on that later. In order for reusable packaging to have its desired benefit, it actually has to be reused. So you lose any sort of potential positive impact if it just gets used once and thrown away. So it needs to be reused in order to reach its full potential. Now, we'd encourage you to even use things that aren't directly labeled as reusable as many times as you can. For instance, our tissue paper, we've come up with a few different ways to use that again. At the end of the oh, I can't say at the end of the day again, I said that too many times. All of this information about a circular economy and a circular model of doing things is fantastic. But what you really need to be doing is educating the people that are gonna be using these products so that they know what to do with them. None of this matters unless your customers are aware of what to do with their packaging when it arrives. So if something's compostable, if something's reusable, if something's recyclable or recycled, you need to let people know. That's how this whole thing starts. Because when people know what to do with the items that they're given, they can help participate in the circular economy. The thing is, everybody wants to help, but they just need to know how to do so. So if you tell them what to do with their packaging, that's a great start. As with all forms of progress, it's okay to take stock today and figure out what your vision is for the future. You might not be doing everything you want to do right now, but as long as you have that long-term vision, you can work towards those sustainable goals. And that's what really matters at the end of the day. I can't say at the end of the day again. I've said it so many times. At No Issue, we're always looking for new initiatives and new opportunities to equip our customers, partners, and team so that they can positively impact their communities on whatever scale they're able to. Reducing the environmental impact of packaging is one way to make an impact, and educating communities is another way. And that's what we're doing right now. We're all learning. And that helps. That's, that helps. And now, an armchair FAQ? Welcome to this episode's armchair FAQ. Today, we're going to talk about the second adhesive strip that you may have noticed on your no-issue mailer. Every no-issue mailer comes with not one, but two adhesive strips. Why is that, you might ask? Well, great question, and I'm glad you're here. The first adhesive strip, furthest away from the pouch opening, is for you to use. When you put your item inside your mailer, you can use the furthest away strip to seal it inside and then send that package to your customer. Now here's where it gets really exciting. When your customer receives their package on their doorstep, they can open it up using the dotted, perforated line on the outside of the packaging that says, reuse me. You see, on the inside, there's a second adhesive strip that your customer can then use to reseal the package and send anything they want to whomever they want. It's the adhesive strip closer to the pouch opening. They can peel off the backing, seal the package again, and send something else to someone that doesn't even know that you've sent the package in the first place. That's exciting to me, because this has just gotten two uses instead of the usual one. Thanks for stopping by this week's episode of Armchair FAQs. If you have a question that you'd like me to answer, please feel free to comment it in the section below or give me a ring. My number is 555-55555 or text me. So that's it. I hope you learned a little bit about the circular economy and the different ways that you can help make an impact and educate others to make an impact as well. The more things we keep within the circle, the better. Vote Ben 2024, here we go.